Hi, this is JP from Not the Lights of Arkham. In this how-to tutorial, I will be going over a typical scenario setup and how you might do it efficiently. And I will be setting up the second scenario from the Insmouth Conspiracy campaign. And the second scenario is the vanishing of Elena Harper. I won't go into much detail on the scenario and the outcomes, but if you haven't played uh, the first scenario, I suggest you check this video if, uh, later if you're sensitive to uh, spoilers. So, uh, that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, well, the first thing we usually do is check that our chaos pack is in order. So uh, we have the chaos pack set up in the campaign guide, usually in the few first pages of the guide. So I already have the pack set up from uh, the previous scenario. So uh, I have all of the required chaos tokens in there and uh, we managed to remove some of the chaos tokens so that has been uh, updated into my campaign notes so I remember if I ever have to dismantle the chaos back then I can just rebuild it just keeping note of the original line of tokens and removing those that have been removed or add tokens that have been added then a quick word on how I organize my scenario cards. So uh, I have the return to boxes. I'll just quickly show one of those. So in my return to boxes, I have the uh, scenario sets or the uh, encounter sets in a different pile. Then I have the scenarios as uh, separated as uh, like this one scenario is uh, one deck of cards here so I can just if I'm uh, for example playing the unspeakable oath I'll search for the unspeakable oath from here and I have all the cards for that scenario and these return to boxes are really convenient for this there is actually a bit of extra room here so because we don't, still don't have the three meters uh, cycle return to box I have the half of the dream speaker cycle here and this is the uh, waking side I can't remember the name of the uh, it's the web of dreams yeah so I have the web of dreams scenarios in this box and in another box I have the uh, dream quest cards well uh, this is a really efficient way to store your campaigns in one box and you don't have to search for them from all over the place but how I like to do with the more recent um, campaigns I have this kind of toolbox which I have uh, recommissioned to be a uh, uh, card storage box you can get this like this is uh, less than 20 euros in a hardware store you just have to be uh, sure to check that the dimensions are uh, so that the box is wide enough like this or high enough so that you can fit cards either this way or this way I have a different bigger box for Marvel champions where I store boxes uh, upright because it's a uh, much larger than this one but uh, this is just fine so here is my inspawn conspiracy cards so uh, I know because they are in order here are the first two scenarios and all of the campaign uh, encounter sets then we have the next two scenarios the next two scenarios etc uh, this is actually empty there's the, we're still missing two cap uh, boxes for the campaign so this is empty and waiting for cards but these are filled with cards 
So, we are setting up the scenario too, so I know I need to pick up the uh, first box. And this white one is actually a full set of the core set encounter cards. So, because most of the campaigns use these cards, I have them separate in this box, so when I'm setting up a scenario, I need the scenario cards, the campaign encounter cards, and the core box encounter cards. So I'll just pick this one. And these are all the cards I need for setting up the scenario. Then, of course, I have my pre-built decks for each game in this red one. So it's easy, easy to distinguish from these boxes. And I'm playing Stella Clark, so I have Stella deck here ready to go. And that is all we need from this box. So I can just uh, put this back where I usually keep it. Just for now I'll set it aside. So what I usually do is I don't really mess on around with the player deck. I'll grab the encounter card list. So we have the required um, encounter sets listed here. So as you can see there is quite a lot of encounter cards from the core set also listed. So four sets from the uh, in smart conspiracy and four sets from the core box. So first I'll search for the core box cards. So they are just in a pile here and I'll keep them in order depending on the icons. So we'll just quickly shuffle through these and pick up those cards that are needed. So we need the Midnight Mask set, we need the Baya yeah, well, this is the Night Gun set. I can't remember the correct name. Then we need the Lock Doors, which are here. Then we need the... Something, something. Well, they are listed here if you remember the names, but whatever. I found it with the symbol. So that is all we need from this pile. So now I can put the rest back into this box to keep them. Uh, where I need them to be and uh, then we pick up the scenario so I have the first scenario here second scenario here and the counter cards here so first we'll just grab the scenario cards and as you can see all of my scenario cards are pre-sleeved I use a cheaper sleeve for the scenario card so because I don't uh, unsleeve them, so I'll just buy a, usually a back pack of uh, sleeves at the same time I pick up a new scenario uh, mythos pack, so I can just sleeve them and they are ready to go whenever. Then uh, we need uh, this set actually, so we'll pick this, then we need this, uh, I think it's a pitchfork symbol, well, we'll pick those. Then uh, we need not this set, not, uh, and we need this set, and uh, what else? Yeah, I think this is actually the scenario. So this might sometimes confuse players when they are organizing these cards. So remember to check the uh, scenario symbol of the specific scenario because usually it's listed here so you don't have to uh, <laughs> worry that you've lost some cards somewhere so again I put the rest of the cards into this box so they are safe and out of uh, w my way when I'm setting up the actual scenario and now that we have all of the cards uh, ready We'll just quickly read if we need to put something aside. Well, uh, the instructions give us quite clear instructions to just shuffle everything as one encounter deck. So I'll just pile these as one. 
I usually do like uh, some form of shuffling before the game so I pre-shuffle everything before I start so I'll just put them there and re uh, shuffle them later next uh, I'll I don't have my uh, extra like encounter deck holders or anything because this is a tutorial but I'll show uh, those later so I usually just look for a good place to place this uh, card so I can easily see what each of the special symbols are then uh, actually this area is dedicated for my out of play area and also for the uh, act and agenda cards so I have them easily at hand then we have this uh, fine agent harbor card which we need to buy uh, per the setup rules or instructions set near the uh, scenario reference card. Then we have the act and agenda. So, per the instructions, I think we need to remove something. So, it's really important to read this part really carefully until you uh, read. You are now ready to begin. So we have uh, constructed the encounter deck. Then we need to put uh, locations into play. And uh, I tend to keep all of the locations that usually come into play or don't have a special back, like uh, the unrevealed side first. So I'll just search for them from the encounter cards. They are all here. Then we have a couple of story assets. Uh, the instructions actually say that well, we'll go to that later. So now uh, there is usually when there is a big map, there is a setup helper for the map. So I'll follow that and I'll usually just glance at the pictures and double check them later. So I'll just throw them all over the place like so. And this usually doesn't take that long. So we have the layout ready and these are good to note that we have spaces over here on the map to add locations later because there are some locations here that get added later in the scenario but we we'll don't we won't go into that, that much now uh, now that we have the locations in play uh, we already can read from the setup guide that each investigator begins at the insmart square so I'll place the investigator mini card on there and usually I'll just uh, reveal it so I can immediately place the required clues here then we prepared the leads deck so this is a new uh, specific mechanic for this scenario so we have a leads deck with the these uh, named enemies or suspect enemies rather and hideout locations which are marked with the insmart hideout hideout etc and these are uh, humanoid suspect elites so uh, we ha are instructed to shuffle the six suspect cards and the six hideout cards and then randomly choose one of both so I'll do it for the suspects first so we'll just shuffle this quickly and put one here and we, yeah, we need to put them underneath the finding agent harbor we'll put these aside for now then we do the same for the locations so we'll shuffle these and put one here then 
uh, we are instructed to shuffle all of these together to form the lead stack. And again, I'm using this area for these um, different kind of mechanic cars. Like if we have a location deck or like this lead deck, I'll just have it over here. So it's not taking any room on the playmat. Then uh, we shuffle the 10 remaining. Well, we done that. Then we said we have a special part that we need to pick Agenda 3 and Act 2 aside. So we'll do that. So we'll put these aside out of play, and I'll usually have them over here somewhere. And uh, then we put the Doma Thomas Dawson and Elena Harbour story asset and both copies of the ninth count enemy and winged one enemy aside out of play. So this is a good example be you, that you shouldn't immediately shuffle the uh, encounter deck. So now we know that we need to put the knight counts so they don't start in the beginning of the scenario in the deck and also this wing one enemy so these are set aside out of play so I'll just put it over here somewhere and we have a Thomas Dawson and Elena Harper also set out out of play area and then we shuffle the encounter deck so now we should shuffle this well I'm not doing it right now and you are now ready to begin. Okay, well, we'll just quickly put the player deck here. I would shuffle the player deck. I would add some resources from my token pool. And that is basically it. So, not that hard or anything. It took me maybe 15 minutes to set up while I was explaining, of course, if I wouldn't be explaining, it would take uh, not even 10 minutes. So one thing to note is that I use these kinds of uh, extra things. So I have this uh, holder for the encounter deck and also a holder for the act and agenda cards. These are just uh, because I like them and they look fun and they are need to have in use so they are not necessary but they are just awesome so that is why I use them and also I use location connectors because these are so great so I just place them here and these are in not any way necessary but they help especially when I'm filming I Sometimes, if I'm not using them, I might miss a connecting location because I'm a bit far from the table when I'm filming. So I might miss that, uh, for example, this is connected to here or something like that. And right away, I'm missing that <laughs> there is one look, connection missing here. So, yeah. But that is basically it. This is how you set a scenario efficiently. We have the chaos pack ready and everything going. So I'll just quickly uh, mention that as you could see, it's really fast to set up the scenario if you're organized with your cars. So keep everything organized in boxes and uh, uh, get some uh, cheap boxes for scenario cars. So they are in one place. You don't have to look from a big box uh, and which may not even have dividers. And, uh, cards are in big pile. It, it, it takes a lot of time to search for cards so if you can shorten that step of the setup that's already halfway there. The other thing I want to note to mention is that I use uh, these token boxes for my tokens so I have all the tokens I need in uh, ready to go. I don't have to like separate the tokens from a big bag, like uh, these are the clue tokens and room tokens and these are the resource tokens or anything. And the same thing goes with my uh, chaos pack uh, 
uh, Chaos tokens. So I have the, the Bless and Curse tokens separate. They are easy to add and remove. And also if setup set tells me to add a minus five, I know they are here. So I'll, I'll have them at the ready and all of that good thing. But that is basically it. If you have any questions on maybe how, how to make setup for you more efficient, hit me with an email or uh, ask a question in the this video uh, question area. I'll be happy to give my thoughts on your specific situation. And remember, any of these extra bling are not necessary to play the game. I just have invested a lot of time and effort for this game and I love how it looks when we have these beautiful playmats and stands for the decks and uh, tokens that are blinged up and uh, colorful sleeves and everything that makes it pop a bit more. But I hope this was um, in some way useful tutorial. Thanks for watching and until next time.